Guys, it's Monday night. We're here with the Coach Reed Live show. It's always some wild stuff going on right before we get on. That's why everybody's laughing a little bit. Some stuff we talk about, we can't bring to the live. We got to keep that between us. But I am here with my guy, Smoke Dixon, former member of the Alabama Crimson Tide. He wishes he was still playing in the secondary back there. You know, he's got a lot to say about the SEC. I got my guy, Kerry Davis. Big Ten extraordinaire, Big Ten champion at the University of Illinois way back when. You know that was a long time ago. Nice, man. Super Bowl champion with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We have our basketball guy who does know football as well, McDonald's All-American committee member, Brandon Clay. And, Brandon, it seems to me like every single time I see you or I, I see your, your live feed, you got more. I didn't even know Adidas had all of this stuff. Every day that I get on here, you got a crazy Adidas package, right? It's good. It's good to be. It's good to be valued. I'll say. Mm. That. Mm. Hey, <laughs> listen. And me, I used to coach high school football. I was decent at it. I, you know, they call me a has been now, but it's all good. We I here tonight, so you know, I can talk that basketball too, Clay. Don't don't. Hey, let's yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be cold in no time. It's almost time. Give us like three more weeks and then we yeah. get that break before the playoffs start. We can talk crazy. It'll be fun. Hey, we're not going to get on it. I do got at the end, Kerry, I was talking with Joe Sheldon the other day. Oh, yeah. And he what said, you say? we had a basketball conversation. We're going to tap on that at the end. We ain't going to mm -hmm. front. Please do. You know, we got to have a conversation. Hazelwood Central versus Rashawn High School back in yes, the day. Indeed. Listen, guys. We on tonight. I also want to give a shout out to Well Off Media, my guy Deion Sanders Jr. Bucky, sharing his platform with us, doing some amazing things over there. Also bought my boy Philip Dukes over there. We got a lot of great content to go over tonight. We're gonna start where everybody in college football has to start. The University of Colorado wins again, mm. guys, and, and I know that that is becoming problematic for some people. You know, there's an old saying, Smoke. Mm. Oh, well, we'll pause. That I, I mean, it's an old saying, Smoke, pause, pause, pause. that I got to have new haters because the old ones have started to like me, right? <laughs> and that's what it seems that's happening at Colorado. Matter of fact, this is Cortland Johnson has checked in. Now, he's also a former Colorado Buffalo, so we got a, another Buffalo watching the yeah. show. And I just want to see Smoke what can the people say about Colorado now? Pause for a second. So we got Carrie's on here, B's on here. But you threw that at smoke. I got good hands, so you know I can catch them. And I don't, I don't, I, when I get hit on the pin, I can take that too. Because you know I can bob and weave and get and get back on track. And I got a mean counter punch. So Reed, get, get into your question that you just threw at me. It's a dart. That you try to throw up my heart, but I ain't gonna let you take me out like that. I don't think you can say anything other than understand that Deion Sanders is one of the top coaches in all football. And what he's done in the last two years is remarkable. And we need to give him his flowers. You and I sat down last year and we talked about just winning four games, and everybody's like, oh yeah, and they were laughing. But all of this has been a head coach. If someone said on a football team you would have three-plus wins at the end of the year, we'll all run up and say, heck yeah, I'll take that. Now, if that three took you from one to four wins, happy. If it took you from four to seven, happy. If it took you from seven to ten, you fired up. So all Dion has showed everybody is that his process of getting to where he wants to get to is a little bit different. But he's getting to what he wants to get to. And that's the Big 12 championship and a place at, this, at the table of the playoffs when this is all said and done. That's what he promised. That's what he's delivering. And he's doing it a heck of a job playing tough on defense, competitive as heck on special teams, a little bit blundered. But at offense with, it, with, with Shador and Travis, boy, the world got something to worry about. Because when you got a trigger man back there that can spin it and you got an offensive weapon, like Travis, you're putting a lot of people in conflict situations on what they want to do to defend you. Brandon, what are you seeing out of the Colorado Buffaloes at this point of the season right now? Well, they've been able to stay relatively healthy, which is huge at the skill positions, right? 
Oh, that's why they got hurt last year. The lines are better. We've talked about the trenches, and I love Kerry always uses that term. I think it it translates, right? They've been good in the trenches. And, and then maybe most importantly, they've gotten carryover. You think about last year, it was an entirely new roster. Everybody, coaches, staffers, people, just it was all new. So you get some carryover, and, and your biggest players, your biggest stars, they all were returning home this year. There's something to be said for when you come back home and, yo, it's just year two. Like, yo, I've been here. I was here last year. It's not new to me. I know how to get to, you know, the Zaxby's or the Chick-fil-A or wherever it is you want to go with. I know how to do all that. We don't have to talk about that. We don't even have to expend any mental energy on that. We could just worry about football, make sure we're getting better, handle our business. And, and then kudos to, obviously, Coach Prime for just keeping everybody focused on the goal. When you have that many people, you know, Shador, Travis, obviously, with, with what they've got in store for them next at the professional level. Jimmy Hoard Jr. chasing some of those same dreams, putting himself in position. It's easy for people to start looking left or right. You lose a game like you lost in Nebraska game. It's easy for things to go a little astray, and that hasn't been the case whatsoever there in Boulder this year. Kudos to everybody. It's happening on the recruit trail. I'll come back to that. Kerry, when I look at when I look at the Colorado team, I feel like this year they've solidified themselves in the trenches. Now you're a guy that loves trench play. You love running the ball. You love all of that. What have you seen? What's been the biggest difference for you, the way that the lines are playing on both sides when you go from last year to this year? Man, football is a is an easy game, man, when you, when you simplify it. Protect the quarterback, get after the quarterback. If you can protect the quarterback up front and move the line of scrimmage to gain yards in the running game, and, and defensively, if you can create penetration – those things win games. And I think that, that when you're looking at the, the, the Colorado team, that's what they're capable of doing in comparison to last year. Another thing that I think that has shifted or changed, they're more resilient. Like you go down 13-0 in, in, in Lubbock and you're, you, you got four, you had your first four drives end in punts. Two of them are three and outs. And, and then your defense stands up. They continue to stand up until the offense can get rolling. Football is about being complimentary. If football, if, if offense is rolling, defense is rolling, special teams rolling, you're probably going to have a good night. And when one one of those phases is struggling, your defense is going to have to step up when your first offensive drives, first four offensive drives lead to a punt. And so that's what they were capable of doing. It's more resiliency. It's not, you know, it's not the – I've been on teams, man, where, where we know that it, we got to get going early or it's going to be a struggle. And it's bad. It's hard. But then I've been on teams where you can be down a couple of touchdowns and it's not the end of the world. We got enough behind us. We got enough in us to get back. And I think that that's the transformation you see from year one to year two, the resiliency, the ability in the trenches and the resiliency to keep going forward, even when you're down early in the game, because going down two scores in a place like that on the road is not if you're not if you're not physically and mentally ready to handle that, you're not going to be able to withstand it. And it's going to be a blowout and it's going to happen early. And Colorado was able to get back into that game because they are more resilient and tougher. You you know, as I as I smoke, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to you here in a second. As I was going through the offseason and reading the comments and listening to everybody, what really was appalling to me, <laughs> what was really, you, you know, what was really appalling to me was the disrespect oh, that, that Coach Prime was getting <laughs> as, as a coach, you know, as a coach. And, and, and that's something that happens, you know, quite a bit. Coach Prime is one of the most brilliant football minds I've ever been around. And to me, a guy that's one of the greatest players of all times, the fact and who did play on both sides, the fact that people would think that he didn't know ball, it was just alarming to me. And so when you see his team, his attention to detail, he's also a great special teams guy. People don't really understand how well he knows and understands special teams play. Obviously, he knows the secondary and some of those other things. He's been coaching and winning for a long time. And I, I'm just always appalled when I hear people question his football acumen, especially guys questioning it that I also know have no football acumen, that they don't know anything about football. You know, so I, it, it's just preposterous to me, you know, some of the comments that I hear about his ability to coach. 
he is very, very good. And he's well, Reed, I, I, I'm gonna cut you off real quick because if you listen to people that don't know football, then that's on you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you say this up. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> if you listening to people that don't know football and they telling you something, that's like somebody telling me something. I'm like, man, you don't know what that nah, I'm cool. I'm gonna keep it. Carrie, Carrie, you know what? I think we all just fell into the web of the Carl Reed, what the like the Carl Reed rep. Yeah. He's been doing this, and I, you know me, Reed. I listen when people talk, mm -hmm. and I see it a little bit better than I can hear. You've been saying this for three weeks. I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off. <laughs> you have. You think I ain't been listening to you? He has been, right? And today's the day that you felt like, you know what? I'm pat. You, you were a little bit nervous about six. Yeah, we got six. I'm, I'm gonna temper my. <laughs> then you got the seven, and you started sitting up. So hold on now. We are in control of our fate in this playoff thing. So I'm going to go out and start throwing every one of my bullets out there. It's going to catch somebody. But, Kerry, you said something that made complete sense. And I don't think people understand what you're saying. And I'm and, and, and I'll, I'll try to explain it a little bit more. You played on teams with average quarterbacks, and you mm -hmm. played on a team with the NFL Hall of Fame potential quarterback with Ben Roethlisberger, correct? Yep. yep. You knew when you had Big Ben. If you were down two touchdowns in the first three drives of the game, you're looking over there like Ben got us. Yeah. Foot and foot and, 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 and James and all those guys, Joey and all those guys on defense are saying, hey, listen, guys, let's just put a Band-Aid on this and give the big man over there an opportunity to get all those guys settled down. Yeah. We know that at the end of the game, we just give the ball back to him just one time, and he's going to lead us to the promised land. And you can see that and when you watch the game with Shador. Mm -hmm. You saw his leadership when he went up and down that sideline and challenged people. And now everyone's going to point things like, oh, my God, he's getting in people's faces. No, he knows his guys. Right. Those are his soldiers that he goes to war with every single day. And he understands, how am I going to get these guys going in a hostile environment in Lubbock? A lot of it's on me, speaking of Shador but I'm going to take it off my plate and put it on the opposing defense. And I think you're just seeing just a steady growth of a coach and coach Sanders that he's grown to as well. Reed, I know you knew that he was this good. He's showing it to the world and everybody that didn't know that Shador was a leader. You're seeing that. And if you didn't understand that Travis Hunter is the best two way player in college football right now, that's what you're seeing week in and week out. Y'all call me a hater, but I only speak the truth. Hey man, I didn't call you no hater, man. And I, didn't, I didn't call you. I didn't call you a hater today. Right. I didn't call you a hater today, <laughs> today. Right. But I'm. I'm gonna tell you what. This is. This is something. This is something else. If you getting. If you get to hating too much, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna bring Deion Jr. with me because he showed like he showed that ball boy. He'll mm -hmm. get you up off of him. Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, that's a real muscle right there. Hey, he ran up on buddy. Listen, listen. And when Smoke was playing corn at Alabama, he couldn't jam the receiver like that. That's stiff arm. <laughs> hey, that's all I'm saying. So I know, I know who to, I know who to bring with me. You know what I mean? If anybody give me any problems, I got Bucky got my back. So I'm not worried about none of the hate that nobody brings me. Hey, Reed, real quick before we switch off of this, one thing I want to say, and all three of y'all will feel me. When you start to put together the results that they put together this year, not just the players in the NFL pedigree and that piece of it, right? But a guy like Seaton, who's not a part of the family, as Smoke likes to you know, acknowledge the, the family, the Santa's family. Seaton, Seaton's a different guy, uh, not part of the family. No, but, <laughs> you can't get the break today, Smoke. But it, it's been cool to watch that happen. And now because of that evolution, you're starting to land some other recruits, right? You've got the Adrian Wilson kid, four-star receiver, who's already committed. It All signs are pointing to Juju Lewis maybe coming that way, right, to play quarterback at Shadour lead. Uh, all of a sudden now, there's a train of guys behind this first train, and that's what happens when you have some success is that that first train goes well, people reach their desired destination, they get off to their next stop, but you have another train right behind and that's what's starting to happen in Boulder. Should Coach Prime decide to go ahead and stay? Obviously, the NFL is going to be called, and there are going to be some suitors for him. But should he decide to stay put, he's not going to have any lack of talent. And that transfer portal is going to be portaling. 
come January. I can't well, wait to see. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what. It's easier to recruit when you win. Uh, absolutely. When you when you when you're winning football games and they can actually see that the way that you wanted to do it and the product that you're putting out there works, it makes the recruiting game totally different. And now you're just not getting one guy like Travis Hunter or George Seaton to believe on you. Now it's droves and droves and droves of guys. Every week I get hit by somebody that's trying to get in touch with Coach Prime, that's trying to get in touch with the staff at Colorado. So the talent that is interested in going there right now, um, the talent that is is that is trying to descend in Boulder, it can keep that program going at a trajectory, especially because he built his roster differently than what people feel. People feel like your foundation has to be high school kids, and they still have recruited some high school kids. They had a true freshman walk-on playing center, Cash Cleveland. They did a great job, you know, in the game on, on Saturday. So, But now you get a better quality high school player overall. Smoke, we're gonna go. Um, we're gonna go here, right? Because I, I normally would start with Kerry on this because this is a Big Ten thing. Mm. Now, I'm, a, I'm gonna start up here with with Smoke, okay? On the on the whole issue with Indiana, Michigan, right? Pause I just, for a second, Reed. Reed, pause for a second. I ain't gonna hold you. You can't come to read that first. You gave your man care. I know that 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 you, you, this is this is St. Louis over everybody and and all that. <laughs> you 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 listen. Hey, you, you 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 can toss that at me whenever you want. You know how I catch it, <laughs> right? But we're not gonna give a pass at least two weeks in a row to carry because he says he needs more time. I think time. Yeah, hey. Has, has shown oh, us that good. the question that you're going to ask and the conversation <laughs> that you need to have is to my man over <laughs> there. When Get you write, carry, you write. Man. I you might know. not need another, I might not need another week. Oh, he might not. <laughs> <laughs> he don't need this week. Go ahead, Reed. I it was 20 to 15 over a Michigan team that is down <laughs> in the way that they are was a bit dis disappointing. At home, um, you know, I, Indiana's a team that's been averaging 30, 40 points a game, a, a, a game, and they have been blowing people out. But we talked about this, about the level of competition that they have, that they were, that they have been facing, and when they face better competition. Now, Michigan, and I thought about this as well. I'm like, man, when do you think the last time, if ever, Indiana was a 10-point favorite over Michigan, anywhere at any point in time? They were 13 and a half, I think 13 and a half, 14 point favorites going into that game. Michigan is, is this is the, the, this is one of the worst Michigan teams I've seen in a long time. Mm. Kerry, like you you're forgetting like three years ago, they sucked too. No, 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 no. I, I, My brain goes back <laughs> to, to the Rich Rod years. Like those years were, were, were bad. Yeah, they were but, trying to get rid of Jim. They were trying leaving, to get rid of leaving, Kerry is going to always take the opportunity. To do this. <laughs> He's going to always take the opportunity. They, they have they have used three quarterbacks this season. They they've settled on this quarterback at this point, which he threw for hundred plus hundred thirty seven yards. Like they can't pass the ball. So how you don't got eight people in the box? It, it should to me, Indiana should have blown this team out. God, That's just my no. personal opinion. Man, that's, that's how crazy. I feel. You know what, Reed? It's best that, you know, let, let's pretend like Kerry didn't even say nothing. Go ahead, man. No, he, so he, listen, he, he, you he disagree? Is, so smoke, you disagree? Smoke. Michigan gotta, is terrible this year. I got to blame this on And me. I would tell Foot that. No, I would no, tell no. my boy Kato June that. <laughs> no, and they would probably agree. Listen to this. Michigan is terrible this year. Yeah. Smoke. <laughs> this, no. <laughs> this is why I came to you first on this because yeah, I didn't I feel like hearing it. I, I didn't feel you, you. You owe the fans an apology. I, I knew that. that he was going to instantly go to hate no me. Y'all think Michigan, Michigan is terrible this year? What do y'all y'all don't y'all don't watch Michigan play football? I, I, I watch. I, we watch. You think you think that Michigan team is 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 good when they know. are one one dimensional? No, I mean, when has Michigan? That's typical Michigan football. Best, at least you had the threat 
of a pass with 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 JJ you're McCarthy correct. and you're Mac correct. like you had a threat of it. You're correct. You know, I would like man go man to man. Loveland is the only person I might have to put my best player on. You do. And I'm gonna go man. I'll put nine in the box. You ain't gonna run but two people out. Here and here's I'll the problem. For the back if you decide to to swing them, right. they are terrible. Here's the problem with the big team and with Big Ten people like yourself, Kerry Davis. <laughs> I <laughs> asked a question about Indiana. I didn't <laughs> ask you. And, and so, so I here's asked you a question about the I, 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 By me talking about how terrible Michigan is, that should give you your answer on Indiana. I don't need to see them next week. I don't think they're number five in the country, and I think they're going to get the hell slapped out of them next week no, in Ohio State. Wow. That being – Wow. Okay, no, go ahead. Reed. Look, I know you well enough to know you in your heart of hearts, you feel the same way. But you tell me how you feel, brother. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna tell you how I feel. Go ahead, Reed. Go ahead. This, we're gonna pretend like. Woo! He came on the top rope, elbow, Dusty Rhodes, <laughs> Dusty Rhodes, Indiana, <laughs> Indiana University. Coach Signetti mm -hmm. has done one of the best coaching jobs that we've seen. Absolutely, absolutely, they have. And him and Coach Prime are the front runners for Coach of the Year, right? Correct. So we can't disrespect Indiana by saying, oh, well, Michigan is down or they haven't played. Nobody has ever talked about Indiana football. I know, I know. This is their first 10 win season ever, if I'm not right. mistaken. Yeah. Like, like in, in ever. When have we talked? Like, when? who cares about Indiana football until now, right? right? Now people are studying what Coach Signetti is doing, so we can't be we can't be disrespectful. So, so I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't. When you when you show me a product that is the the product that Indiana has shown me this season, and then you go out there and play in that manner against that level, I don't get. This is my thing. The 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 name on the helmet at times, especially at the collegiate level can change a perception. If you put them same damn players for Michigan in a Purdue helmet or a Northwestern helmet, Indiana beats them by 40. What are we talking about? Kerry, you know what? I hear I hear what you're saying. I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. I don't believe Michigan is the same Michigan team they were last year. No. Obviously, obviously the quarterback, I mean, when you lose – more than half of your team to the NFL draft that happens. And they're and not good. No, they're, they're a five win team. They'll be in a, they'll go bowling and win seven. Right. So no, they, they're, bro, stop. We, we carry Michigan ain't in the mix. Yeah. <laughs> Does Indiana belong in the playoffs? Let's get back to that. Yeah. Does, <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, let me go. Let I'll me let you know next come week. On. How about come that? On. I gave you my oh, answer. Okay. Okay. Clearly, Reed, you didn't on. like you didn't like my answer. I didn't like you your answer. answer. Reed, I on. gave you my answer. I, got you. I, didn't, I didn't like your answer. I'm, go I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Brandon. I'm gonna put <laughs> I'm gonna put pause for me. Let me go to Brandon. Brandon, does India is does Indiana belong in the playoffs based on their body of work right now? Yeah, strict the schedules. Strict the schedules. Like it is what it is. It's, it's in the hundreds. It just is what it is. Kerry, uh, you actually said this last week. There's nothing we can do about that. They beat who they played. Even the Michigan game, right? At some point, they were going to have a game that was close, right? Um, they've been whacking people two touchdowns, three touchdowns. Michigan State by 37. That's not – I don't care. Indiana's not going to be good enough. Where that is a weekly thing through a league like the Big Ten, even in what I consider to be a down year for the bottom two-thirds of the league, right? I think the bottom two-thirds of the league are lighter than what you're accustomed to seeing in that league. But Indiana was never going to run through everybody by 21-plus every week until they got to Ohio State. They were due for, a, as Smoke would say, a win-ugly game, right, where you find a way to grind it out. And I think it says a lot about Kurt. It says a lot about Rourke, the quarterback. It says a lot about them that they didn't fold, to Smoke's point about Shador. That, that's a game where you learn a lot about the person in charge on the field where Kurt is like, hey, man, look, we got this. We got this. We got this. We, uh, that's one of those games, literally, as a player, as a staffer, as a coach, you just keep saying to yourself, we got this. At some point, the levy going to break. We're going to get out of here with a win. We're going to get out of here with a win. That's a game that an Indiana team for years, they find a way to lose that. We call it tricking off the money. They find a way to throw the money up in the sky. And all of a sudden, they're 4-1. And, and you're like, oh, man. They won the game they needed to win. They've been looking at Ohio State. You can't tell me those young men 
between the age of 17 and 22, maybe some of this old is 23 or 24, the game is changing. Right. They walked on campus in Bloomington the past six days. Hey, man, I can't wait for the Ohio State game. Can't wait for Ohio State. And y'all going to be in the playoff. This is crazy. So the fact that they were able to just win the game that was in front of them, I don't care who they were playing, Carl, as of today, assuming that the Ohio State game is a competitive game, they belong in the playoffs. If they come out and they get smacked, it's 35 to 3, 38 to 3, and then they stumble with the last two games. At that point, I think you got to reevaluate. But right now, they've won the games in front of them in a year where people are losing every single week. They belong in the playoffs today. So you 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 make an interesting comment. You say winning the game in front of you. Now, Smoke, there was a team in the state of Florida that did not mm. win the game in front of them. University of Miami falls to Georgia Tech. I, 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 <laughs> oh, you – so I, I don't, no, 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 no. Tell me, hold on, hold on. I, I, How, I think you well, want – because I do want to get on the Miami game because that was a, a, an atrocity as well. <laughs> we, can, we can make excuses. They got Ohio State in two weeks. You don't look past Michigan, even if Michigan is as bad as they are. They beat Michigan. It's not a, it's a, it's not a, a, a trap game. That's the University of Michigan. You it line up, game. you it's not. It is it's never. Game. Not in the no, it's not. All right. So Kerry, what so never so, so the way that you're looking at it is that Michigan is Michigan of last year. Michigan, no, I, I know they're not the Michigan. This whole type, this whole type. Yes, they can look ahead because they're watching tape. Just hold on. They're watching tape just like we are. The same thing that you just said. This is they've gone from quarterback, the quarterback, the quarterback, back to the same quarterback, and they can't even throw the ball downfield. Their best corner is out. All they have is those two interior defensive linemen. Indiana's quarterback was hurt, that right hand. So he's not a hundred percent. So you're you're looking at a team that figured a way how to win. And that's all you have to do when you get into the conversation of November. You were just trying to find a way to get to a W, to get your team healthy enough to now when the showdown comes between you and the Buckeyes, you are playing at your best, you're your healthiest, and that team behind you, you put that behind you, you won a game. Kevin, you have to give them their, their just due. You got all oh, he, he, he gets play. really in his body about the Big Ten boy. I, I, I'm he just really listen. Me, Indiana's Indiana's here. Karen. They're good the, team, and I'm happy for that. I'm happy. Hey. For that. I'm happy oh, for him. Antoine Randall, hey. stand up. Hey. Wait, you hey, you going back? Hey, quick, quick point before we like move to Miami, Reed. Quick, quick point before we move to Miami, fellas. Seven days ago, we were all sitting here on this wonderful show that we do such a great job on, and we were looking ahead to Ohio State and Indiana. <laughs> we were already we talking can about Clay. We oh, can. Okay, okay, okay hold they hold can't. On, hold on, hold on. I, I, I don't disagree, but I think one of the greatest things about sports talk in this age is you forget, especially at the, those dudes are seventeen to twenty-two. <laughs> we got pro guys that look ahead every week, so if there are pro guys skipping games, I'm not saying they should. I'm not saying they should care. I'm saying they do. There's Buffalo looks ahead. To, I agree to with City. I, agree I sit with down there, good players. You know I how agree with care. everybody on here. They won the game. That's what you come to do. You won the game. It wasn't impressive. Ken, yeah. you, needed, you, needed two, you needed two weeks to be able to. You well, say I, that. Yeah, I got two more weeks because they don't play till the 23rd. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you know. We got Steve. Steve Hayden here saying Indiana got lucky. Big Ten is down this year. Big Ten, Oregon, and Iowa. Five, State three down. teams in the top five. God, dumb. Go ahead on, you can't be more up, Steve. Stop it. You can't <laughs> be more up. That's what Steve said. It. Listen, Miami smoke. Ooh. What you think about the Miami game? Miami losing to to Georgia Tech. Reed, this is two years in a row that that that, that they got out coached again by the same staff, and I've been saying it for weeks now. We'll get to that conversation about flipping the paycheck to player to coach because we just saw coaching malpractice. You've allowed Cam Ward to play in that manner the entire season. Structure, no understanding when and how to do what you want him to do when he needs to do it. 
So now you come to a game like that when you really need a coach and you can't do that because this thing has gotten out of hand. They got the ball ran down their throat. Kerry was hitting me up all day. Man, who's the linebacker? Who's fitting it? <laughs> hey, hey, Kerry, you, you played against Jason, Ter- uh, Jason Taylor, didn't you? Yeah. You know Taylor was going to get after that daggone quarterback. Not too much in the run game. He coaches the edge players for, for the youth. They, they can get after the passer. That run game, not so much. So it, 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 when you look at Miami, it's been the same recipe, Reed, to beating them. You get it muddy and you physically outplay them. And for the most part, and I know Mario is all about physicality, your team is not showing us who you are and they don't have a true identity other than Cam Ward running around, playing off script, and throwing the ball up and bailing you out. At some point, that Cinderella um, from shoes on Cinderella, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them glass slippers break. Can and you develop an identity that. like that in the transfer portal era with guys coming and going and, and, and the money about it involved? Can you develop a power running situation you can. like that? You, you can. But Reed, and I, and I wanted to say something about to you about this a while ago. We have to look at this whole entire era a little bit different. We got to look at it almost like the NFL. Every year it's a new team, unless you've had that team together for a four- to five-year stretch. When you have a, a veteran team that you just got rid of, now you have a new team and it's really good, you're going to wait until about November to truly figure out who you are, to find your identity. But you start with that identity earlier on in spring ball for college. And I think they they don't have a true identity because they're not working at it. I think they've given up on it. I don't think they have enough discipline to say who they are. And quite frankly, we don't know what Miami's identity is even before Cam Newton got there. Like you no, if I went around the poll right now and said, if I asked you to give me two words for Miami football right now on offense, defense, special team, we'd all probably say something completely different. Because we see something completely different all the time. So, yes, you can establish it. It just takes a special person. It takes time to establish it. We saw that get established this weekend for Alabama two weeks in a row now, two games in a row, for what they did against somebody's <clears throat> Missouri team and then what they did to the Tigers. So we've just been grabbing Tiger tails and been just tossing them all over the place for the last two games. <laughs> listen, so, listen, listen. Go ahead. First and foremost, yeah, what's happening? styles make fights. Yep. Right? Georgia Tech is a tough draw for a team like Miami because they run gap scheme run so well. They run counter and power, down, down, kick out, as good as anybody in the country. Mm -hmm. Double team at the point of attack to the backer, wrap around for the guard, play side power. It's tough to stop gap runs. Most teams are designed to run fit on zone, but the way they come off the ball is tough. I think they had, what, 275 yards rushing, against the University of Miami. So even when you're thinking about Cam Ward, Cam Ward was really not the issue in that game. The issue is the defense is bleeding out. So, yeah. Go ahead, Smoke. But, no, go ahead. But, Reed, you, you, myself, Kerry, and Brandon knew what Georgia Tech was going to do. What I'm saying in, t- in terms of just the standard and, the, and, and what your discipline, your culture look like and identity look like, you don't have that identity on offense or – defense you don't so that defense has always been an issue of stopping gap scheme runs and power down inside zone run teams have always given Miami an issue and even and it really read you know what no because the problem is also on the edge so you can't say it's, it's, it's a straight gap scheme it was issues all over because because it was not just get, man they did yeah. whatever they wanted whatever to they do. Whatever they wanted to do, you just they don't ran, have no identity. They ran, they ran option. They ran zone read. They ran quarterback power. They ran every type of run you want, and they ran it to a T. And they, and I text you all in the group at one point. I said, y'all think y'all think Miami D coordinator know they're gonna run the ball? Like, do have they have they have they figured out that they're gonna run the ball on the edge? Like, uh, like the pass on you. Like it, it's. But stop the damn run, man. Stop the run. If only it was that easy. It is that easy. It, it's not that hard. <laughs> if they're running power, if they're running counter, 
you might maybe Miami, you got more athleticism than, than most teams, I'm assuming. Maybe you wrong shoulder it. Maybe you allow your linebackers to scrape over the top and make the play instead of same arm, same leg, and getting kicked out and then getting gashed straight down the middle. But Gary, when you wrong shoulder the trap, if you wrong shoulder and they go in zone, if they go in counter read, now you've just given up the edge. You got to be able to. Your linebacker is scraping over the top. Until that defensive end step running up the field to go get a sack on a run play. How about that? You got to play the run. <laughs> fellas, fellas, check this. I, I stay in Atlanta. First of all, Brent Key's done a great job. Let me, that's my opening statement on this subject. Against Miami, yeah. yeah. No, just in general. Like when you look at, oh, uh, credit no, where it's due. When you look at Brent Key, like his, it, just in totality, I'm just shouting out Brent Key in the program. They've done a great job, respectfully, this year, right? They've made Georgia Tech competitive. To your point, Smoke, you know what they're bringing. If you're Miami, you have to force Hayes King to throw the football. If he yeah. throws the football for 400 yards, four touchdowns, no, no interceptions. Pat him on the back, tip your cap. Man, that's a hell of a game. Good yeah, job. like you have to force Hayes. Hayes King is literally handing the ball. No, nah, you know what? I'm going to keep it. I'm going to run on the outside to the corner and score. I'm not a Haynes King run on me. Haynes King wants to do one thing. He wants to run the football, man. He averages just under 200 yards a game passing it. And that's when they get to the point where they beating you so bad that he can start to nickel and dime you. That's not supposed to be what Miami is. They're not supposed to be a CFP <laughs> playoff team and be getting nickel and dime in the passing game. Oh, or if you guys cut on the film against Virginia Tech, same thing. You cut the film on against Cal. Oh, man. Same thing. Yeah, man. So, Reed, listen, I'll say it again. There's no cultural identity on any side of the football, offense, defense, or specialty. And, again, that's why I come out and I said, at the end of the day, there are some situations where we can flip the paycheck and nobody else would even have a question about it. I, I will say this as well because we talked about Heisman's last week, right? And I yeah. think we all had Cam Ward on our Heisman list. And I, I don't think that one game takes them off. But every Heisman Trophy winner that I can recall had a Heisman moment. Mm -hmm. And that game right there for me was his Heisman moment. Like you're down. You got an opportunity to go back down and score, to take the lead, to win the game. You put the ball on the ground, game over. Like Kerry, I understand. Yeah, he's done. But, Kerry, with, with that said, He's come back like three times already this year and had Heisman moments. So you can say you can say he took an L for that game, but you can't say we we need to remove him from the Heisman trophy. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said oh, he's he still, I said he's what he really is trying to say is that the Heisman Trophy winner should be at the University of Colorado. That's what he's <laughs> trying. Lord Travis. That's what he's so, trying to do. I said. So, so even with that said, I'm with it. And I and I and I want that to happen. But Kerry just trying to make an argument for a guy that's played every single game this year and is the sole reason why Miami is in a top in a conversation still for the playoff. He's what the sole I'm reason. Saying is when you are the best player on the field, I need yeah. you to be the best player on the field. I, I if 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 your defense is getting gashed, yeah, like to the manner in which they were, yeah, and you got the ball with an opportunity to go win the game. I need you to put yourself, your team in a position to win that game. Every does time? That mean, does that every uh, – uh, I can't – if you can't, I can't lose. So, listen, so, so, listen I mean, you guys talk about – you guys are football guys. Now, here, here's, what's, here's what's messing me up about you two. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm talking to one guy that – said every time. Yeah, hell yeah, every yeah. time. No, no. What you doing? This is ridiculous. I'm talking to one guy who's an <laughs> SEC champion, played in the NFL. I'm talking to another guy who has won the state championship, the Big Ten championship, and the Super Bowl. And y'all are just making it seem like it's that oh, all they got to do is stop the run. If they just stop the run, then not, they can't stop the run or they would have done it. Well, you got to oh. force Haynes King to throw for 400. I think that's really the counter here. Like, force Haynes King, King to be the best oh, quarterback ever. Force Haynes King to throw for So hold on. Reed, you were nine in the box. Wrong. Force You're Haynes right. King to go crazy. Five force, Haynes, force Haynes King to throw for 400 yards. It all sounds sweet. Y'all make it seem so easy. So what should they have done defensively to force them to do that? What, what should they have done? Should they have put 11 people in the box? I would have put what nine in there. We're going, we going, going so on the outside. Like, no safety help. What, what should they have they should, have they should have tackled better, and they should have been – that. yes, they should have had more people in the box. You, 
Well, what are you really, about here, here, it's the same thing I just said about Michigan. Why do I care if you throw the ball? You can't. You have not shown the ability to do it. So the one thing, like you, you love Nick Saban. I think he's one of the greatest coaches to ever do it. I not one of the greatest. I think Bill Belichick is also one of the greatest coaches to ever do it. What do they do? They take away what you do best and find another way to beat me. So if now we're now we're comparing now we're, now we're now we're comparing. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not saying you have to be Bill Belichick or Nick Saban, but I'm saying you have to take away what that team does best and force them to find another way to beat you. Remember when we were kids and we had what was that commercial they used to have? I got to look it up. This is they had an egg and they say this is this your is brain. Your brain, on <laughs> brain on <laughs> that's what I think. That, that's what I think every time somebody uses Saban and Belichick as the person smoke. to compare it to him. I got Great. one for you, smoke. I got one for you, smoke. Get Here's the him. phrase of the night. Coaching matters. Coaching matters. <laughs> hey, Reed, Reed, you, you know I went back and I watched all 22. All right? You know I went in hard on it. Again, schematically. They, they still don't have a clue on how to defend gap or zone read or quarterback run. They don't. You see three guys in the head in the same gap, and you know that. If there's three hats in the same gap, and you know that multiple times. That business. If you don't have integrity on your edges. So you're asking us to go down to Georgia, I mean, go down to Miami, and become their coach. I'm not going to give them any secret sauce tonight. I'm just going to tell you what I see that's not getting done. And maybe if you do it, you might get it fixed. If you got three if, men in the same gap, you're going to get gashed. Gap integrity is the first rule of defense. Everybody knows Reed, you got a gap. Reed, the, the first play of the game. What are we talking this, about? The first run play of the game. You have one, two, three, four, five guys outside of the C gap. And you have <laughs> Four guys on one. You have one guy in the middle with a puller and the running back coming at him. So again, down, down, kick out. So you saying by you saying based on alignment they had no based problem. on alignment, you have issues. Based on playing assignment sound football, you have issues. It's called discipline, integrity, identity of what and how you are going to play. If you just said it. If we're going to wrong shoulder, we wrong shoulder. If we hammer, we hammer. If we play four eyes and make everything bounce, that's what we're going to do. But I need to see how you are going to defend inside zone and gap schemes moving forward. And I don't think it's nothing about any coach being bad or good. I just need to see how you are going to defend it. And I haven't seen it being defended on a consistent basis to walk away by saying, you know what? They're going to do it when they see the next team that does A, B, or C. And let, let's be let's let's say this because sometimes, as a coach, y'all all know this. You tell them what to do, and then they go out there and do something completely different. But I had a I had a wise coach tell me something that I I've always stood by and I've stuck to. He said, "You either coaching it or you allowing it. Mm -hmm. It's one or the other. You either coaching it that way or you're allowing it to happen." So if you got four guys in the wrong gap and you didn't coach them to do that, then you allowing it to happen because two, three, four of them need to be standing next to you till they figure out which gap they supposed to be right. in. Well, I'm, I'm going to say this before we move on to the next topic. Speak for yourself. My guys never did that. They always did. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. We didn't have. I didn't, I, hey, so, listen. <laughs> this man didn't have with me. <laughs> players not doing what they respond to. Yeah. We, we next topic, sir. We're gonna go. Now listen. You talking about defensive integrity? There was a defense that's normally the elite that has some problems this weekend, and yeah. I'm gonna start with the guy that's a, a homer for this program because y'all gave me so much work a couple weeks ago with the University of Missouri. What happened to Georgia, Brandon Clay? Mm. Like, oh, you hate to see it. Yeah, hate to see it. <laughs> uh, you know, I think it's a, a multitude of things, right? Old, old Miss is good. We'll start there. Respect. I always like to respect the opponent when it's due. Old Miss is good. Lane Kiffin has done a fantastic job with that program. We talk about this every week. They got guys that are going to play on Sundays. They got guys that are going to be draft picks. Uh, heck, even the wide receiver they have is so good that didn't play. Um, you know, this they got they've done a great job. 
that's my opening opening statement there. We weren't very good. You know, Carson Beck, the struggle. It's just been, and, and with each game, you know, progressively more and more of a struggle for him. You hate to watch it happen, right? You know, it's funny. I was talking to uh, Dante Grant, a friend of mine, lawyer, NBA agent, does a great job. Carl, you talked to Dante. We were having a conversation this week. And he said, "What you know, what do you think? I said, man, new levels. You know, Carson Beck starts the season, potential projected night one pick, whether he should be or not, right? That's floating. It's very prevalent on the media. You can see it. You can read it. Uh, you know, he, he's played, you know, he comes off the 24 touchdowns, six interception season last year, 3,000 plus yards. He's rolling. And, um, you know, we lost Lad, lost Brock. Tough. Always losing to guys on the defensive side. That's just what Kirby and them do. They're going to turn over defensive guys to the NFL. But offensively, we lost a lot. And Nate Frazier's been really good. We don't necessarily have the same weapons on the outside. But Carson's just – he's been forcing the ball into some places. You know, that's, that's not open. You can't throw three picks every single week and expect to beat good football teams. Old Miss is a good football team. And, and so, at some point, that stuff catches you, right? It didn't catch us in the Kentucky game. Um, obviously, Alabama, we weren't very good in the first quarter and a half, and they kind of dialed it back in. Texas played well in the first half. But uh, just tough. Tough game. And you play enough of those against good teams. And I think that's my statement about the Big Ten. Um, without disrespect, this is no shade here. But the SEC's got six, seven teams this year that on any given weekend on a Saturday can beat you. The Big Ten has four. Like, they, there's a separation there, and that's okay. That's the, I think it's a simple point there. Um, I, I love the way that you guys <laughs> try to trick the viewers. Right. Oh, let me finish. I love, I love it. I love it. And I hope I hope that they catch it. And I think oh. our, I think the people who watch our show are very hey Gary and Spoke gonna come back to that in a second. Let me finish this point. I'm out here. I got one for Reed. I got okay, one for hold on. Reed. So so my last point to this, and this goes back to finishing off the thought about Carson and the new NIL era, and I think just kind of where we are, right? You driving a Lamborghini, you're a song can't you're a pro. Right, you got a Lambo. You driving a Lambo on the campus. Your girlfriend plays in Miami, but you live in Athens. He's thrown five touchdowns and nine interceptions since she came to that game and posted on social media. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> woo, it's hard. And, and I think that goes to, to your point, though, Reed. It's all of it, man. It's it's hard That's to deal with the level. That's a net. Hey, 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 B. Let me let me let me get out. Let me get after the call, Reed, real quick. Go ahead. I, I got I got a few bones to pick with him. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, these are these are oxtail bones. So I, I, I know how I know how y'all get down with oxtails out here. <laughs> you know, you put them on the grill. You do whatever you want to do with them. You smoke them. I just had some oxtail last week, man. Keep yeah, going. I'm Jamaican, so y'all know how we get down. <laughs> Reed, this summer, you and I sat on the show together, and you belittled me and told me how much of a square that I am. And how much coaching matters, but Kirby Smart has the heartbeat of his team. And you said they're going to run through the SEC. And I said, Reed, what did I tell you? No dice. I said they're going to struggle through the SEC. Character, good ball players, and discipline is always going to show their face at situations and times like this. Georgia got too much going on right now on their campus and on their team and at their quarterback. Football is not the main thing. Before when we looked at Georgia, football was the only thing. You took football away from those guys that were crushing. Right? There were guys showing up with Lambos and taking photo ops with whoever just to get on because getting on was winning games. But, Brandon, you guys have a real live issue. And I'm not saying that you guys don't, you can't fix it, but your offensive line is not the same standard. Of what Georgia Georgia's offensive line has been in the last few years. Lost a great old line coach in Matt Luke. There you go. Great old line coach. One of the best. So in so, so the best B, in the country. So B, you cut the tape on, and your best offensive lineman that just came back, Tate Ratlitz, yeah, just came yeah. back. He got whooped, wore out. Those interior defensive linemen that Ole Miss went and got in the portal showed up and they played. Your left tackle, Green. My goodness. Got beat the drums. Your right tackle, they were rotating in. So when you leaned on Georgia, you always said Georgia can win the game the way that Kerry wants to play it. Power downhill, 
four to five yards per carry. And if our quarterback is halfway decent, we are going to win the national championship. When was the last time you begged for a Georgia quarterback to bail you out? It was never the case. So now that Carson Beck is showing you who he is, we hope that he could go out here and play and be real good. You had a 5'11 walk-on kid come and outplay him for years. Just understand that now. Hey, and make sure you, you say his name. Say his name, though, bro. Denton <laughs> Bennett, the walk Smoke, let me ask, Smoke, let me ask you. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Should Carson Beck have went to the draft last year when his top pass catchers left and went to the NFL when Bowers got out of there when those other guys should he have declared last year would his stock have been higher than what it's ended up looking like right now? I sh- that you know what sometimes right. yes I think you should have just because the less you know in the NFL the better it is let them find out later on who you aren't but you're just being exposed now because the number one thing that I always wanted to look at quarterbacks. Did you elevate your team? Did you elevate the people around you? Or you're just along for the ride? If you're going to be a first-round quarterback or top-10 quarterback, you have to have that ability to carry a team and help build a team. Because most of the time when you go into a team carry, you know the worst teams get the best picks early in the draft. Yeah. So if you aren't that guy that can say, you know what, I'm going to put the cape on tonight and you guys just ride on this on, on this wave, Yes, but when you're at Georgia and you have the best that money can buy, the best that you can recruit, and you're still looking like this, I don't want to hear about the guys outside that can't play. And I know the offensive line is struggling. Travis, Trevor Etienne has not played well. Frazier's put the ball on the ground. Bobo has not called a great game this year, for the most part, because even at Texas, they struggled on offense. They just came out there and Glenn Schumann called one of the best defensive games that I've seen in a long time, and they came out and played well. But Georgia, they're real issues over there, B. Agreed. Never uh, seen I, a Georgia team look like this. Well, let, let, me, let me say this to that point. Agree. You go back to the Matt Stitchcomb days in terms of your offensive line. We've always had some dudes in the trenches yeah. who can get down, right? So this obviously is an aberration. And, and I think to the weather, you should stay or go. Uh, in theory, you would have told him to go, right? But then you look at Jake Fromm, who left and slid. So it just, you know, especially in the NIL era, if you Carson Beck, you got the Lambo and you got the cabin between. You good until hey, you're not good. So, so, so you hey, think hey, hey, man, you are you wilding out tonight a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> man, man, you wild, you wilding out a little bit tonight. Reed, huh? he's, seen, he, he's seen all them people in the live, and he's getting real, real excited. Man. <laughs> hey man, you know what the cool thing is, and and, and Carrie, you take this and run with it. But I, I think in this day and age, especially living so close to campus, I, I get a feel for just kind of what the buzz is, right? Like what's happening, what's going on over there. And and everybody obviously was really, really excited. And I think you you kind of feel Carson pressing a little bit because to Smoke's point, just the outside stuff, right? Um, there's just so much happening on the, the campus, just day in and day out, just on a normal Tuesday now. There's so much stuff that's available to these guys. They got marketing deals and they got commercials they got to shoot and obviously there's money that comes with that and the ability and the access to do different stuff but just their schedules are even different and what they're asked to be and do to do sometimes you can miss on maybe that extra game prep film prep take the check down read don't try to force that thing in there get it back in one fail swoop i think sometimes you could just y'all, y'all know this y'all played at a, a high level sometimes you could just lose your way and you just I'm need to reset and get back to business. No, when we haven't been very good. Like that's no, oh, no, no, no. We haven't well, been very and, good. And what, and what <laughs> but why haven't we? Let's peel back. Why we haven't been good? At the smoke's point, before Tennessee comes into town Saturday night at seven thirty, what can they do to fix it? Because they're still right there in the hunt. Right. They, if they went out, right? If they went out, they're going to be in the twelve team yeah. college football playoffs. So. What and can even we in the do? SEC championship. Yeah, what what can we do before Saturday night gets here to not lose again? Because it's an elimination game. The first round of the college football playoff starts in Athens on Saturday night at 7:30. I will be outside. What can we do to get there to make sure we're ready to go? That's what we are right. To your point, Clay, you can't afford to not make the main thing the main thing. Yep. Like if you got other things that are pulling your focus in other places. The thing that got you all of those things is football. So if you want to continue to have those things and more, you better continue to be good at football. 
Because the moment you are not good at that, all that other stuff goes away. So, it, and I think, again, this is probably one of the hardest things for younger players. I mean, it's hard for NFL players to, to stay locked in on keeping the main thing the main thing. But like you said, if this is an elimination game, if you don't win this game, you're out, you're done. It, it's a wrap. And so now, to me, you know, I think I think Georgia is obviously they're talented enough. You got to get you got to fix the mistakes that you had. I thought for sure when Georgia went up seven to nothing, Jackson Dart is in the blue tent with his getting his leg looked at. He looked like he was done for the day. I'm like, oh yeah, Georgia, Georgia finna blow these boys out the water. And then it just didn't happen that way. Jackson Dart came back, and Ole Miss just continued to play and put pressure on. And Georgia, for whatever reason. Didn't look like the same Georgia that Smoke had was foaming at the mouth about on defense about at that Texas game. They didn't look like the same. And, and with with you was right. They played good defense. They, but, they, but, their but, defense is their defense is not the problem. Then I'm, then their, their their defense is not the issue. The issue is their offensive line is played poorly. You got to figure out a, a way to fix it. Well, I mean, we don't have George Pickens or AJ Green or one of those guys to cover up those they mistakes. Those guys is pretty good. Don't. So, 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 <laughs> with, with all that said, it, it's the the defense. The, the, your defense at, at times, you put so much pressure on them. At some point, they're going to break. Yep. And it, it's not the same fourteen guys that are going to get drafted type of skill players anymore. That's there right now, and they're playing up to that level. No, but they're still good enough. But when you saw that interior of their offensive line just get pushed back, they couldn't even get a yard on third and one. Yeah, you're not used to seeing that, Georgia. You're not used to you're not used to seeing that. You're not used to seeing that. You're rotating offensive linemen just not to give them reps to get better because they're playing playing poorly. And the guy that you've been everyone's been screaming about. Yeah, wait till when Tate comes back. He's back. You don't want him back. Because he's a little bit banged up. In yeah, the, they, need in, Dylan Bell. they need Dylan Bell out there too. Yes. But 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 but, but again, when you are when your your players are getting in trouble and getting removed from the team, you start losing the depth and you start losing that mentality of afford who you can afford to be. And if you can't afford to be locked in like Carson Beck needs to, you might need to get back to football and make football the main thing. At one point, when that was important to you, people were talking about you being a number one quarterback. Now that you want to be a social media superstar, now you're losing some of that. Now, Reed, I'm, I'm going to throw something at you. We all are, are, are athletes, and, and, and we love playing whatever ball that it was. Whenever you could take that away from us, you gave us a challenge and said, hey, listen, this is your week or this is your day. If you come out here, you practice really good, you're going to start. You came out there and played your best. This is Carson's Beck moment of truth. Mm. This is your playoff game one. You had that against Bama, not so much. Didn't play well. You can say study the stats. Those numbers in the, in the, in the, in, the, in the second half, I'm not blown away from them because those are open receivers, and he threw it to him. Texas didn't play real good, right? So now you have every NFL exec saying, okay, how is he going to play? Jalen Milrow had that opportunity. You saw what he did. He came out back against the wall and showed you an LSU. This is who I am. He came out against George and showed you who he, he was. Shador has shown you that the entire year. Cam has shown you. The guy that we're all waiting on to say, can you? It's Carson Beck. And right now, B, he's played at a, a D or C level and hasn't shown up in big games. Well, Brandon is going to say it's because he's on Instagram too much. You know, Brandon. That might be a part of it, Reed. I'm hearing, I'm hearing Instagram. I'm hearing um, girlfriend. I'm hearing girlfriend. Yeah, this stuff get the yeah. urus, and, I was like, and, my, hearing, and if they clean, the line will hold you. I saw him driving through the streets of Athens. He, he, so, hey, hey, is that Carson Becker and Anthony Edwards? They fly now. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm hearing you got online classes instead of regular classes. I'm hearing a lot of excuses. And once again, I'm telling you, I love how you guys try to trick the viewers like a magician and put the focus somewhere else. But football is football. Guys been taking online classes for a long time, B. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Guys been driving big boy cars for a long time. <laughs> no, that, listen, that, that, listen, that was an encouragement. You got me playing better. 
He <laughs> told me I can go pick one out. It never made me play work. It, again, <laughs> it all comes down to what is the main thing and what is his soul motivated. This game should motivate you to the top level. This is the playoff game. Period. Yes. Win or go home. And that, if you don't look at it like that, coaches should play coach like it, players should play like it. And it's not getting tight, not getting anxious. It's just understanding that this moment, I got to deliver. And we'll see if it delivers. Hey, Jared Goff threw five picks last night in the NFL game. I ain't trying to kill Carson Beck, man. You With know, Lamar St. Brown. Let's not, let's not forget that. I'm going to tell you this. You know, me smoking, me, me smoking, Kerry, I graduated high school in 99. And when Kerry picked Illinois and Smoke picked Alabama, the rumor is that they both got handed $10,000 and were told to go to McDonald's and buy a value bill and keep the chain. <laughs> that was the deciding factor. I fact. believe that. Yeah, that was the deciding well, if, if, if anybody sent me to McDonald's, they didn't know me well. I, I can count on my hands how many times I've eaten at McDonald's. I don't do fast food, read. you know that. I know that. <laughs> so the one of the last things we're gonna touch on today, coaches starting to get fired. We're hitting that time where mm. week after week you're gonna have you're gonna have some fires, whether it's head coach, whether it's coordinators, position coaches. And I'm getting a lot of parents that are asking me, I'm committed to school A. The coach got fired. What do I do? What's your initial thought process? I'm gonna start with you, Carrie on what a player should do if he's committed to a school and his coach gets fired. Uh, are you talking about a, a, a recruit going to that school? A recruit going in the already A recruit. A recruit going in the got to You got to look in the mirror and, and really see who are you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you you have to have people around you that are going to have honest conversations with you. Are you a kid that got 40 offers and if you decommit today – you got 39 other schools that are willing to take you and drop one of their people. Or are you a kid that got a, got a few offers, you made your commitment, and everything else is full, and those teams have moved on. So you got to have honest people around you, in my opinion, to know who you are and where you are. If that's who, And once you make that decision as to who you are, yes, I can get out of here and get to somewhere else and feel and land in a safe space and still – do all of the things I had aspirations to do, or man, I'm gonna have to ride this out and hope that the next coach wants to keep me under on, on this scholarship coming in for the following season. Like you, ha- and, and and this is in my opinion a case by case situation. But you cannot; it's not something you just paint with a broad brush. Like you got to look at yourself. And I want to say this, man, for for young people, when people have an honest conversation with you, they're not hating. It's not always coming from a place of hate, especially if it's a person that loves you and cares for you and is trying to get the best for you, help you get the best for yourself. Have honest conversations, man. Look and understand who you are and where you are. How many people were recruiting you? How many of those people stayed talking to you after you committed? How many of those positions are full at the other spots that you may be thinking about? I'm going to decommit and go here. Have a plan. Same thing we talked about with the transfer portal. Have a plan and know exactly where it is you want to go and where you want to be if you decide to decommit from a program to go to another one. Brandon, I'm going to go to you next. Coach gets fired. What should the kid do? I think we hit on the head during the transfer portal discussion. I think a lot of that remains here. Stay put for a minute. Let it all digest. And and a lot of times what happens – the point at which your coach is getting fired, very rarely did that come out of the blue. They probably were on the last leg of the contract. You could kind of see it coming. You went ahead and committed. It probably was one of maybe two offers you had in that conference, and you went ahead and took a chance, right? Very rarely do you see recruits that have offers from everybody in the conference go to a place where the coach is potentially going to get fired. That's usually not how this goes, right? So if that's the case and you still want a chance to try to compete in that conference – you got to sit and just let it all play out. A lot of times that new coach, Dion would have been a great example at Colorado, right? Sit, sit, at least get a meeting with them, see what they're talking about, see what's going on. Um, you know, a lot of times you're able to come in, especially when we, we always say this in the group, if you go come in there, if you're a kid that's going to be on time, at weight, do, if you're somebody that does everything right and you're willing to put some time in, 
maybe even wait a season or two, be really good as they develop that thing. And then you sit and you wait and you play it out. But if you're trying to get on the field right away and there's a change in staff, again, I was sitting at the conversation, but I think you got to be honest with yourself, Kerry, hit it on the head, look in the mirror, and then maybe potentially look at the to make a move. But a lot of times when people get let go, there was some warning signs before you signed that that was going to be the case. Where were you being recruited to before that? But I would just sit, you know, don't do not do anything rash if you're trying to stay there. But if there were a couple other schools that were maybe a level below that were really, really good, had really successful seasons, you better call and get you a spot ASAP before they fill them things up. So you got to figure out what you want to do as a player. Are you trying to go to the biggest brand name or you may be trying to go somewhere where they just won, get better, and then that coach potentially moves up to the school of the conference you want to play at. So a lot of different dynamics there. Smoke. So, you know, I know you get a lot of calls from kids and families, too, and the, the knee-jerk reaction is typically emotional from probably even more so the parent than the kid. What would you say to a parent in this situation when the coach gets fired at the school that kid is going to? Well, as a parent, your job is to always see the big picture. As a, a guardian, a mentor, it's your job not to get so much involved in a relationship with a coach that you're emotionally driven by what happens to that coach. It's coaching profession. Reed, you know it. In four years, everyone is either moving on or moving out because that's what happens. So for the parent, I would all I would always ask them and say, what what are your intentions for this young individual that you are handling? Is it your intentions for hopefully that the institution has a good athletic background? And there's a reason why you're going there because there's more to offer that person other than athletics. Right. So if you're only going there for football or for that portion of it, athletics, then I don't think you've done enough in terms of your research overall of deciding on what school to go to. Because at some point, you and I, all of us know, we're going to lose a game. It's going to suck. You're going to want to go back home. But something else has to hold you there. So to me, when I was when I would always tell parents about making that decision, you have to find three parties that you're connected to. If it's a coach, fine. That's a personal relationship that you have. You have to find someone within that team, right, culturally, that you can connect with your classmates. And also with the school, you got to connect with them. So if all three of those things disappear, then you have to go. But if one of those three disappear and it's the coach, you have to look within and say, were we only making the decision because of the coach or are we making this decision because of the institution and what it can provide for us down the road other than three or four years from now? Because every everyone walks in thinking they're going to the NFL and NBA or major leagues. That's not the case for most of us. It's only 1% that happens to. So you have to find something else that attracts you to that place that you can hold on to in your time of need because it's going to get dark. We all know it does. You're going to lose a few. Coach is going to get fired. Or the coach might end up leaving, going to the NFL or another school and necessarily can't take you with. You. So if your decision was to hang on to this coach as a knee jerk reaction of him saying, you're my guy or you're my girl, then you're getting recruited in the wrong way because you're only going to the school for a person, not for the institution. I went to Alabama because I want to be a part of the Alabama Crimson Tide. So if coaches left, hey, listen, I'm still here because a lot of the people that I came with and the reason why I went, went down there is also because of my classmates. I think that, you know, Smoke, you played at Alabama and most kids are not going to get the opportunity to play at Alabama. So mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest problems that we have in recruiting, when people look at recruiting, when you look at rankings and the reporting and the following of college football, we really given 95% of the press time to five to eight percent of the players. And so people try to relate their situation to what those guys are going through, but it really doesn't apply. Rule changes, coaching changes, different situations don't affect the top 10 percent of kids. Right. So you have to look at it like this. Every kid needs to go into college understanding that the likelihood of them playing for the same head coach for their entire career is very slim. Or position coach. The, that's even that's even less. Yeah. You know, you're you're gonna definitely play for multiple position coaches at right. a minimum. You're gonna definitely play for multiple coordinators. They're either doing really well and they're gonna move on, 
or they're not doing well enough and they're going to get fired. You should consider yourself extremely lucky if you got to play for the same head coach your entire career. And that's going to even be rare. So you have to go in there with the mindset that I have to be able to adjust my game, my attitude, my work ethic to no matter who shows up in this building. And the knee-jerk reaction from parents and kids when a coaching change happens is, I'm going to decommit. I'm going to immediately go in the portal. And then what they've done is they've kind of set their, their future career up for a roller coaster, and they're going to end up on a different ride, right? You're going to end up – you might end up having to go to a lower situation, a lesser situation, and you might find that the new coach actually likes you and wants you to continue to be a part of this program because they still got to recruit and fill the team. You cannot let emotions guide you when you're talking about college football recruiting. There, We've seen situations where guys have been signed on national signing day, and then the next day the guy gets fired. Or the next day the guy leaves and takes another job. It's really not that kind of connectivity to it. You got to be ready to ball and go to class, no matter what the outcome of the situation is with the coach. And the, the problem that people have is the connectivity comes from a coach because it's a coach that's recruiting you. So your hope is that you get to play for that person, but you got to have enough wherewithal and self-awareness now to understand as a parent, we've been, we've been going into this too long. You're not going to play for that guy for more than a year or two, right? And you just got to be prepared for that, no matter how, how it makes you feel. But, guys, you know that most people are ran by emotions. Indeed. So, before we get out of here, guys, uh, last thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to let Smoke end us on this. <laughs> and I'm just going to throw this at him. He wasn't even expecting this. Florida decided to keep Billy, Billy Napier Smoke. Right? What's your thoughts on that? Well, Reed, my thought is as simple as this. I think ADs are getting wise. At some point, you gotta let these guys coach the contract and stop paying them to walk away. If this is if, if I signed you up for four or five years and that's what's in the, in the contract, and you don't have the money to buy them out, like if like you just said, if you don't have the next best guy coming in, what's the purpose of giving this person an opportunity to leave and getting the same thing in? I don't disagree or agree with what would happen, but financially, when you look at it, Reed, we've been saying it for a long time. Florida's not in the place of paying out Mullen and Napier and staff, get a new staff, and have new collective money. That's close to almost 200 mil. That's a one knee-jerk reaction to firing Billy Napier. That's what you're going to have to pony up for the next person to come in. And I just don't think that Florida has that capital. And I think that AD sat down, looked at himself, and saw what was out there to get. And I don't think he saw that was that much better than what he had in-house. And he's just going to live with it for another year and then figure it out after that. Guys, we're going to get out of here on that note. University of Colorado plays Utah next week. <laughs> Big little kickoff for Colorado. And I'm hearing, and, and this might excite Brandon Clay, Young Thug might be. Free Jeffrey. That boy home. Thug is home. <laughs> Uh, all the young people be excited about it. Young Thug <laughs> is home. Oh God. man! Hey, hey, he's in, hey, Atlanta, but he don't live here no more. Shouts to the probation. <laughs> <laughs> leave, that, leave, leave that man alone, man. He got to stay out. Hey, listen, stay away from Baron and Clay if he is in Atlanta. <laughs> Baron and Clay like to talk about what's going on on your Instagram page. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't let me drive the yours. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Guys, it's been Monday night. Thank you all for everybody checking us out. We'll see you next Monday. Happy Veterans Day. Indeed.